Google Spreadsheet is fantastic, obviously, for numbers, but also because they're collaborative, very easy to pull up a uh, corporate policy that uh, allows you to say, you know, have you done certain tasks, watch certain videos, read certain documents, self-reporting. Um, but nothing sort of makes people more uh, in the spirit of getting jobs done than a comparison progress bar that sort of shows where you're at versus everyone else. And so in this video, we're going to look at how to make these progress bars in uh, Google Spreadsheet. Check boxes are just awesome. And uh, and color. Whew, love color. If you're going to make something look special, might as well add a little bit of color. Uh, and as you can see, this is how it works. As you check the boxes, the graphs grow. Um, and if you get to zero, you get uh, different colors to sort of indicate where you're at. It's pretty cool. Uh, if it interests you, how to do, how to build the uh, the how to build the progress bars, how to do the colors, how to go from um, just done or whatever it is that was already in the spreadsheet, convert that to check boxes, then this is the video for you. So let's start with our raw. I'll duplicate this and uh, we'll go tutorial. Now there's a couple ways. Uh, so what we got, we've got to do color, we've got to do uh, check boxes and progress bars. There's a couple of ways to get from this to uh, check boxes and they're not as awesome in the same direction. So let's look at one. Both of them are gonna involve, well, firstly, how do you get a checkbox in a not automatic way? Under uh, insert, so let's say we had another task. Um, we could select there, uh, we could come down and go checkbox. And that's how you create checkboxes. They are, as you can sort of see uh, up here, there's the value underneath that. So they have a value and they toggle between true and false. Now, um, I'll leave one of them just so we can talk about it in a second. So what we want to be able to do is to convert these duns into checkboxes. There is a tool under the data uh, for a menu item called data validation. And uh, what we will do is, um, this is already from, not sure why that's there. So we'll add rule. Um, you can see one of the options you've got is to convert all the different values into dropdowns, which is a very quick way of saying, well, we've got some sample data, let's just make them uh, check box, uh, drop downs that make it more coerced into certain validation, valid, certain values that people can pick. So rather than the continuation of just arbitrary values in all the cells, you can sort of say, well, I know there's a done, there's an in progress, and there's a not done. And you could pick uh, drop downs. What we're shooting for is tick boxes. And um, because uh, the values are either done or empty so far, we need to map those to ticked and unticked. So we'll go done, press tab, and you can see it, we're finished. We're finished. Um, we now have um, check boxes, which if you look up here, you can sort of see map to our original values of um, done and empty, which is great. That might be sufficient. Uh, hopefully you can tell from the tone of voice that I'm not thrilled. Um, and here, if uh, we've lost our check box, but let's, um, Let's put that back in. If we if we use a normal checkbox without, you can sort of see it's true and false, not done and empty. And that can only make things more difficult when we start to want to count them and turn them into progress bars. So let's, let's go about this a different way. Uh, we will get rid of this rule. And uh, so what we need to do instead is to first transform our dones into trues and falses. That's what we're going to do first. And uh, I'm going to do this all in the one spreadsheet. You might want to do this in the second sheet down here. Uh, you might want to, you know, prepare, uh, uh, duplicate, you know, true, false. You might want to prepare down there. Um, oh, look, I'll tell you what, now that I've created it, I'll do it for you here. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform the data in this sheet and then copy it across, copy the values into the other sheet. How do we do this? Um, no, I just said I was going to use this sheet. I'm not. Ah, fuck. All right. We go array formula. And uh, then we want if. Now we need a range. We need the range of the values. Dear me. What happened? Let's start again. If. And there we are. So that's, we've picked the range that we're going to be pulling the values from. If they're equal to done, then transform that to true. And then we put that range back in there and 
terrible quote. Uh, I'll, I'll stop there for a moment so you can sort of copy and paste. I will share this spreadsheet so that you can see this and some other features. Um, and so now that hasn't worked at all. All right. Let's go back. Let's just do it as I've always done it in the same spreadsheet. Array formula. If, and then we'll pick the range. If a cell equals done, enter to true. And then the range again. And now you can see we have a mapping of done to true uh, copied and uh, sort of somewhere else. Now it is based on a formula, so we can't just move it back up. We, what we now need to do is to copy, um, which is, uh, I use the, uh, where we've got copy and paste, I use the, uh, the shortcuts behind the scenes, but you can sort of see the standard shortcuts for whether you're on PC or Mac. Um, and then over here, paste special. And so what we want to do of all the paste specials, we're going to paste the values only. So those trues and bl blanks are now going to be copied across. And here we are, we've now got the trues and falses. So uh, we're done, that job is done. Um, now we need to change that into where we got our data validation, add rule, change that to checkbox tick box and you can see true false is the native value so we're done and so now uh, these are true and false and so when later on we want to add more uh, rows and by the way a little bit of a sneaky one already added that feature thanks to uh, uh, Google uh, the uh, app scripts which we will talk about at the end um, we now need to think about our uh, colors and progress bars. Uh, let's do color, because color makes everything better. We'll select all the area that's going to be checkboxes potentially over time, uh, as we add more stuff, as we add more tasks. To make color based on whether it has a certain value, we use conditional formatting. Um, and so we know that underneath the values are either going to be true, false, or not set. So let's use uh, equal to. If it's equal to true, you can sort of see, we can see over here it's selected the values that so confirm. Now we're going to switch it from background to foreground, and we're going to get some nice green uh, checkboxes. Uh, we could also now, uh, with a little bit of touch of class, we could also make the checkboxes themselves a bit of a softer gray. This is totally an aesthetic choice. None and a softer gray. Look at that. That looks nice. They look lovely. Looks like a web app. Excellent. So we've converted things to uh, check boxes, tick boxes. We've added some color. Let's get on to the progress bar. So to the right. And in order to have a progress bar, uh, we need to have a number of something. So let's get some numbers. Uh, we need to know how many tasks there are because over time we may add more. So let's make that a formula. We don't want to just type in five because that will be wrong. So how do we do that? We can count A. And so I've selected all five and then one more to the right um, gives the whole column, uh, the whole row. So you can sort of see as we add more tasks, you can see that number is going up. Excellent, so that'll be useful in a minute. But first, let's talk about the progress bar numbers. We now need to know how many tick boxes there are. So let's use the same thing for a moment to see if that works. Well, let's, uh, let's copy that to there. And that hasn't worked as we would like. Um, that has counted how many tick boxes there are, not how many of them are set to true. Um, and that's what count A does. It counts whether there's something there or not. Instead, we want count if, and if the value is true. Let's, okay, so that's now looks to be correct. Three, four, five. We'll use the top one as, as representing um, 100%. So now that we have some numbers, we can use those numbers to draw uh, a progress bar. So let's do that. The tool we're going to use is the function called repeat. And we will just give that a try. So repeat some character and some number of times. 
Um, so we can have three, and that will give us three, uh, one, okay, zero, and that will, we obviously now have a number, so let's use that. And so now we get a number of X's. Now X's are not as awesome as the progress bar widgets. So let's get those. So we'll use the progress bar widget. Copy that down. And now we have some progress bars. I mean, this could be as, as, as this could be done. You might think, well, this is suitable. This is satisfactory. Video's over. Good job. A um, couple of downsides, maybe, maybe, as this gets bigger and bigger over time. Um, this goes from five, this is currently this five of those, to 10, to 20, to 30, and at some point, either you have to keep expanding this to make them shown or, uh, or, or not. The other problem, which uh, is, if you're Alan, how do you know whether or not there's another task to do? You've come back to the spreadsheet. Do you know? Do you have to keep scrolling across to find out if there's another task? It'd be good if there was some visual way to tell you that there was more tasks to do. We can solve that first, and then we'll solve the, uh, the scaling uh, talent. What we could do, let's, uh, let's tick a box. So now there's four out of five. How do we show that there's jobs to be done? Well, we could add uh, another set of, uh, I'll find the character in a second, where it's um, five minus four. So we want that number minus that number. Okay. Uh, this one we want to we want to freeze so that as we copy it down it's always B1. So let's do that. So this this is a way. Now that's a terrible character. Once again, I dislike the X a lot. So let's go and copy and paste the sort of empty progress bar. And that's not bad. That's pretty good, right? That sort of shows you that you've. Uh, if there's a grey one, a sort of a, a speckled one, then you know you've got work to do. Um, and it fills out. So that's a pretty good solution to the visual indication, do you still have work to do? It's a good indication of who's not done any work. It lets people be competitive, social sort of stigma to say, oh, I should try harder. Uh, other people are ahead of me. And that's all captured nicely. But um, I think it would be nice if it filled the available space for our time. So more of a, uh, it was a percentage of tasks done not the exact number of tasks. So this is showing I've done four tasks, not that I've done 80% of the tasks. So let's now switch from a progress bar based on number to a progress bar based on percentage. Um, we'll do that, we'll, we'll switch this over to be a percentage. Um, we'll change that and now as it stands, I'm actually going to hide this column in the end. We're going to uh, eventually hide this column. We don't need it. Um, but for now, uh, we'll put it there and we'll make it a percentage because I'm only retentive and it makes it look nice. So now we need to switch this from being based on, in fact, the percentage thing might confuse what actually is, is going on. So we'll keep these as, as uh, decimal places. So we now need to turn this 0.8 into eight uh, units and two units eight units of this and two units of this. And so we will multiply this by 10. So we'll sort of say that 10 wide is 100%. And so we're going to match that back down. So it'll be uh, 10 wide. So we need eight of done and two of not done. And so we could do this. We could do this times 10 as well. And, and, and we're done. Uh, we might want to use round. just to make sure it's always a round number. And we win. Uh, not a huge fan of this. Uh, looks a bit ugly. Let's go make that 10 minus. I don't know, this is, we're now just getting into the, who likes to do maths a certain way. Uh, but there we have it. We have our uh, progress bar, and as we add new tasks and new checkboxes get added, uh, the percentages change, and you'll get an indication that you've still got work to do. We can now hide our the numbers column that we were using to, to build the progress bar, 
and we have a beautiful progress bar. The only thing I would like to add now is, is more color. I think the person on 100% should be rewarded visually, and I think the person who hasn't started yet should be called out as well. And earlier on, we used um, color formatting for the checkboxes, so let's do that again. So now we'll add a color range. Uh, you can sort of see it's gone to green as a default, says so if the format cells are not, if the cells are not uh, empty, then color them. That's not what we want. We need to come up with a system for figuring out uh, are they they've done anything? Have they done everything? Or are they somewhere in the between? Um, we could use the column that we just hid with the numbers, uh, but what we'll do instead is we will attempt to just use these. It's kind of quirky but fun. Uh, does the text contain one, or does the text start with? Uh, what is this contains? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now you can sort of see this one here is the only one that's that's complete. If we uncheck it, now I don't like that. So let's change that to being green on the. So now it's a nice green bar. Lovely. Um, oops. So C to C one hundred. If uh, the cells text, if the text starts with the this one. Uh, then we know that they're at zero because the first one will, will always be a, a block if they've done anything. So if they've done nothing, then let's call that out as red. So we can see the bottom three are now red. Looking fantastic. One more rule. Um, if it contains... One of those then let's make it a yellow awesome awesome uh, what else can we do to make the spreadsheets more awesome um, freeze up to column C so now this scrolls there and similarly we could freeze up to row one so this now scrolls up and down and we always get our uh, our headers and progress bars <laughs> This is excellent. Okay, that is done. Except for one idea. One idea that I think is delightful, but a little complicated. So I'll show the idea to you, show you where the solution is. Um, if you wish me to explain how it works, we could do another video, but it is more of a coding activity than an awesome spreadsheet activity. And that is this idea of what happens when we add another task. You've seen that uh, checkboxes appear magically. That is not built in. Uh, normally, you would have to go and manually add those checkboxes. Uh, we also showed that if we add a new staff member, it automatically adds in the progress bar again. Um, that works. It's all lined up, ready for them, um, and it matches. So we always, every time we add a new row or footer, we, the, the grid of checkboxes grows, and that's fantastic. How did we do that? Well, one of the wonderful things about Google Spreadsheets uh, Google Docs is that they have a thing called app scripts and it allows you to write it allows you to write if you can write JavaScript um, or um, chat GPT to write a, a lot of what I've got here I had a conversation with chat GPT about what I was trying to do and it spat out most of it I know how to code so I can't really remember what it did versus what I did but I will briefly show you the gist of what we have here and I will link this entire spreadsheet in the show in the notes of the video uh, so you can look at it and copy it to your other projects. Uh, but essentially all you would do is copy and paste this into this field on your spreadsheet and it just works on every sheet. It's fantastic. Um, so this is so how does this work? Um, this function will get will be run every time any field in your spreadsheet is, is run. So every time someone checks a box adds a column, adds a row, uh, this function will get run. And so mostly we want the function to do nothing because we don't need to do anything time anyone ever cracks a checkbox. You might uh, anytime tick a checkbox to send a message off to Slack or whatever, but that's not what we're doing here. What we're looking for is has a new, uh, a new column header been added or has a new row header been added, which is a new staff member. So has a new task been added or new staff member? 
Um, and I'll, I'll just point out where the code is. This is the code for um, if a new uh, header row has been added. Uh, check the cell in the first row, which is a, a, a column header. Um, if so, then figure out how many columns we already have. And uh, on that next one, the one that we've just added, sorry, on the one that we've just added, the header cell, go down and add checkboxes for um, every row. So I have explained that incorrectly. On the column that we've just added, figure out on the previous row or column how many checkboxes are there. And then on our new row, on our new column, add that many checkboxes. So this is when I added task seven, it added the correct number of checkboxes. Whew, I explained that incorrectly multiple times. The rest of this is the same idea, but going across. So if we add a new name on the side, this will add the formula for the, for the uh, um, progress bar, and it will add all the checkboxes. You can see they're adding checkboxes. Um, I wrote most of this with, with uh, ChatGPT. Um, because as much as I know JavaScript, I don't really know the Google Sheets API. And so this was pretty wonderful. It made mistakes. I told it what it didn't like and what I needed it to do. Um, and it's just spat it out. But you can just copy this. Um, so clone, clone my spreadsheet and then under extensions to app scripts, you'll find it. So there we have it. A fully featured progress bar uh, with checkboxes or any other you know, thing that you want to count up because we use the, uh, this is the word. So however it is you wish to count values, this was the number, the progress bar was then based on how you counted those numbers. And then we added some color um, and then a little bit of app script magic so that uh, the spreadsheet would grow over time. Hopefully you enjoyed that video on Google Sheets. Uh, like and subscribe because that's just a really nice thing to do and it makes YouTube know what to show you. More, you. more Google Sheets videos, more automation videos, more coding videos, whether they're from me or from someone else. So click like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.